Humans have a natural desire to know what is going on in the world around them. Society today has transformed into an instant gratification culture. We want to know what is happening and we want to know it right away. With so many outlets to choose news from and with technology improving and changing by the day, how will citizens get news in the future? Will it be similar to the formats we receive news today or will it be different? In this special edition of TCU News Now, we will discuss the question, how will we get news in 2025? From the Schieffer School of Journalism, this is TCU News Now. Welcome to a special edition of TCU News Now. I'm Maddie Brown. And I'm Hannah Coons. Where will we get our news in the future? This is an important question, not only relevant to the TCU community, but to the entire world. What is changing? What remains the same? Let's check out some statistics to start. Newspapers are in a crisis all over the world, but the problem is seeming to affect the U.S. in particular. America is experiencing extreme job loss from the newspaper decline. The U.S. has shed 20% of its journalists since 2001. In 2012 alone, we lost 2,600 jobs in professional newspaper organizations, and we've experienced severe layoffs across the nation. One example is at the Chicago Sun-Times when they laid off the entire photography department in 2013. So if people aren't reading the newspaper anymore, where are they getting their news? The answer to that is online, specifically social media. According to a 2012 Pew report, the news has a place in social media, but not all social media platforms are created equal. The most popular social media sites for people to get their news are Twitter and Facebook, where half of users get their news. Another site is Reddit, where 62% of users get their news. But the sites that aren't good for getting the news are Instagram, Pinterest, and Vine, where less than 1% get their news. Facebook's news popularity is actually accidental. 78% of Facebook users who get their news on Facebook are usually on the site for another reason. And just 34% of users like or follow a news outlet on social media. Legendary media mogul Rupert Murdoch once said the profits from newspapers are like rivers of gold, but noted several years later, sometimes rivers dry up. Along with huge job losses in print newspapers comes a plunge in ad revenue. But this decline isn't just affecting print, it's also hitting online. This can be attributed to the free marketing many companies call social media sites such as Facebook and Twitter. So where do we go from here? The only answer seems to be online, where 74% of adults are on social media, 71% have Facebook, 17% use Instagram, 21% use Pinterest, and 22% use LinkedIn. So with that in mind, we were curious to find out what TCU students would think. So we asked the question, where do you get your news now and where do you think you'll get your news in 10 years? Facebook, I don't know, it's filled with a lot of random stuff, but at the same time, there are a lot of those trending topics that show its links to online subscriptions like New York Times or um, the Wall Street Journal. Maybe I don't have a Twitter, but I think that's where like most people my age probably get it, but um, I just see on Facebook basically. Like, it's already switching like a lot to social media. I would say there's probably not going to be newspapers anymore, um, just at the rate we're going. And I would say there's just going to be a lot of new technology where we're going to have a chip implanted in us and know exactly what's going on or something crazy. I would definitely have to agree with the students. I really use a lot of the internet more so than print myself. I would say the same for me, and I hate to say it um, in regards to newspapers, but I really do think it will all go online one day because that's where I feel like we're all getting our news at this point. Mm -hmm. Since so many are now logging on to social media to get their daily news, this begs the question, will newspapers even exist in the foreseeable future? Our own Chloe Coleman and Hannah Johannes hit the streets of Fort Worth to hear what people think. Uh, TV, cable news. I use the internet to listen to talk radio. Uh, usually from uh, Google um, and then uh, the Today Show. Yeah, Thank Today you. Show, yeah. I watch MSNBC um, and then I do it online. TV, usually watching Bloomberg. Mobile apps. <laughs> Probably just through um, social media. A different form of apps. 
I'm not sure if it's traditional on the phone or on your iPad, but maybe in a different form. My iPad or whatever there is around 10 years from now. It'll probably be on billboards for me. <laughs> I hope. I don't know. I never even thought about it. Maybe not. <laughs> I think Warren Buff Buffett's betting on it. Not in print form now. Almost all of them are all gone now, so most of them will probably go in the future. So it's clear the world of journalism is ever changing. We now know how consumers can keep up through social media, but what about journalists? How should they keep up with the industry and the 24-hour news cycle? Earlier this year, we visited with two journalists who seem to have mastered the art of infusing social media and reporting. One was the Fort Worth Star-Telegram's Bud Kennedy, who utilizes Facebook and Twitter, among other social media sites, to reach his readers. He says there are no rules when it comes to social media, and since platforms are constantly changing, it's our job as journalists to keep up. The most important thing a journalist can do is experiment with different methods of reaching an audience. Another Star-Telegram reporter we spoke with was Jeff, Jeff Wilson, the beat reporter for the Texas Rangers baseball team. We talked about the significance of the 24-hour news cycle and the fact that journalists have no choice but to keep up. He said journalists need to multitask when it comes to reporting and ma managing social media accounts. And he also said it's very important to utilize different tools when it comes to reporting. Whether it's a notebook, pen, a laptop, or even a smartphone, journalists must constantly remain in the loop. So we've looked at the past and examined the facts. The newspaper industry as we know it is being forced to change drastically to keep up with modern technology. And new social media platforms have stepped up, such as Facebook and Twitter, to deliver the news at a constant pace to its consumers. So what do we think? News organizations need to turn away from traditional print and look to the future of online. There's so much potential to be gained from utilizing social media. Not only can news outlets stay ahead of the competition by having a 24-hour method to publish information, but they can also communicate with their constituents. The number one job of a journalist is to serve the people, and we need to be able to hear directly from them to, he to learn what they want and need from their news. Utilizing social media to open a two-way line of communication can take journalism farther than it has ever been before and serve its number of consumers in the most efficient way. Thanks for joining us, and I hope you enjoyed this special edition of TCU News Now. We aren't done yet. Now we want to hear from you. Where do you think you'll get your news 10 years down the road? Tweet us using the hashtag News2025 on your thoughts and you could be featured on next week's show. I'm Hannah Coons. And I'm Maddie Brown. We look forward to hearing what you have to say and we'll see you next week.